ever imagine like Bollywood in a winter wonderland. Mm, okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of an unexpected combo, right? But that's exactly what we're diving into today. Uh, the story of Mayuri Group. I gotta say, diving into their world has been fascinating. I bet. For those just tuning in, Mayuri is a Russian dance group, and they're completely dedicated to Indian dance. And I mean dedicated, they're not just learning a few Bollywood steps here and there. Not even close. We're talking full-on cultural immersion, history, music, literature, even languages like Sanskrit and Hindi. It all started back in 1987 in Petrozavodsk, Russia. During the Soviet era. Yeah, not exactly the easiest time or place to be exploring Indian culture. You'd think it'd be tough to access all those elements of another culture back then, but this group, led by Vera Evgrafova, they were determined. And their dedication paid off. It did. They actually became recognized as Europe's largest non-profit institute of Indian culture. Pretty impressive. For sure. But you know what else struck me? Their name, Mayuri. It's not just a random word they chose. Oh, yeah. It's from a Telugu film. And not just any film. It tells the story of a dancer who faces a huge personal tragedy. But she still finds the strength to keep dancing, keep pursuing her passion. I mean, talk about an inspiring story. Right? And the parallels to Miyuri's own journey, it was about the spirit, the unwavering commitment to an art form that transcends geographical boundaries. Here you have this group in Russia finding inspiration and strength in a story from India. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. It really is. And that, that dedication, that spirit, it's evident in everything they do. I mean, just take a look at their dance repertoire. It's mind-blowing. Imagine like a tapestry of Indian dance woven from all these different styles and traditions. That's a great way to put it. you got the classical forms, of course. Bharat Natyam, Kathak, Tupuri. Each one, a whole world unto itself, right? Exactly. Each with its own history, its own unique movements, its own storytelling techniques. It's not just about learning a sequence of steps, it's about embodying a whole tradition. And to think, Mayuri has mastered not just one, but several of these classical forms. It's mind-boggling. The amount of dedication and training that must take is unbelievable. But hold on, they didn't stop at classical Indian dance, did they? Oh no, they were just getting started. Like, they needed another challenge. <laughs> they dove headfirst into the world of Indian folk dances, too. Which I have to say adds a whole other layer of richness to their repertoire. Absolutely. And the crazy thing is, they didn't even stop there. Let me guess, they threw in some modern Indian dance, too. You know it. And get this, they even weave in elements of Spanish and Russian folk dances. Whoa, talk about a cultural fusion. It's like they took all these different influences, all these dance traditions, and blended them into something uniquely their own. It speaks to their creativity, their willingness to push boundaries and experiment. Totally. They weren't content with just replicating what they saw. They wanted to create something new, something innovative, while still honoring the traditions that came before. It's a pretty awesome approach to dance when you think about it. So how did they go from this small town in Russia to, you know, captivating audiences worldwide? Because we're not just talking local performances here, right? Not at all. It's not just about putting on a show. It's about sharing a culture. And in a place like Karelia, which doesn't have a huge Indian diaspora, that kind of of bridge building is so important. It's like they're inviting the world in saying, hey, come experience this with us. And the world is definitely saying yes. Their, their performance history is insane, India, obviously. But also the US, China, Kenya, Portugal, I mean, they've been everywhere. Something pretty major happened that really changed the game for them. The internet. Ah, the internet. The great connector. It's amazing to think about how much of an impact it's had on the way we experience and share culture. It's wild, right? Yeah. And Mayuri, they were quick to recognize the power of the internet. They embraced platforms like YouTube early on, sharing their performances with the world. Smart move. And the world responded. Their YouTube channel just exploded in popularity. Well, when you've got talent like that, it's hard not to get noticed. For sure. They now have over 753,000 subscribers and millions of views. People all over the world were suddenly able to experience the beauty of Indian dance through Mayuri's performances, all thanks to the internet. They weren't just performing for a local audience anymore. They had a global stage. Exactly. And it's amazing to think about how many people might have been introduced to Indian dance for the very first time through Mayuri's video. It's like they opened up a whole new world to people who might never have had the chance to experience it otherwise. Exactly. Even with all their technical skill, the global recognition, the YouTube fame, 
There's something else about Mayuri that really struck me, something deeper. What do you mean? Well, it's not just about the moves, is it? It's about the feeling, the passion they pour into every performance. You can tell this isn't just choreography for them, it's an expression of pure joy. You're right, it's like this palpable energy that radiates from the stage. You can feel how much they love what they're doing. Exactly. It's contagious. It reminds me of those incredible street musicians, the ones who just pour their heart and soul into their music. Oh, totally. You might not even know the song, but you can't help but stop and listen. It's the same with Mayuri. Whether they're performing a classical or a folk dance, their passion is undeniable. And that passion, it seems to extend beyond just the performances themselves. From what I've read, they've built a whole community around their love for Indian dance. Oh, absolutely. They're incredibly dedicated to education, too. They've established these amazing studios where kids as young as four can start learning these dances, immersing themselves in the culture. Wow, starting them young. It's amazing how they've created this bridge between Russia and India, sharing their love for this art form with anyone who wants to learn. It's a true testament to the power of cultural exchange. And, you know, another detail that always stands out to me is their costumes. Oh, yeah. Those costumes are incredible. So vibrant, so detailed. They're like an essential part of the visual storytelling in Indian dance. But I can only imagine how difficult it must have been for them to source authentic materials, yeah. especially back in the 1980s in Soviet-era Russia. Right. Talk about a challenge. But they were resourceful. Yes. They adapted, created their own costumes, and eventually they were even able to start sourcing fabrics directly from India and Sri Lanka. Wow. Talk about dedication. I mean, it would have been so much easier to say, well, we're in Russia. Let's just make do with what we have. But they went the extra mile to make sure their costumes were authentic, that they honored the traditions. Exactly. And that attention to detail, that commitment to authenticity, it's present in everything Mayuri does. They really embody this idea of cultural exchange done right, embracing another culture fully, respectfully, and with a contagious passion. Their story is a great reminder that sometimes the most unexpected cultural connections can be the most powerful. Who would have thought that a dance group from Russia would become such incredible ambassadors for Indian culture? It's a real testament to the power of passion, dedication, and a shared love for art.